Who's your favourite superhero? Mine was always this guy, faster than the speeding bullet, able to bend steel in his bare hands. Well, this next innovation does exactly that, and it's revolutionising the design and construction industry. Well, Matthias and Matt are the men of steel. Boys, first of all, why do we need to do this? Well, before this, if you wanted to create a connection between the bits of the roof or the bits of the wall, you needed to put two flat sheets and a cover over the top. And now you can do it in one piece. Mm. It means no gaps, it's a structural join, and it has all sorts of functional benefits, and it looks great. How, to, first of all, does someone come up with solving this problem? Well, technically, steel is a really strong material and doesn't want to go in that shape. But if you uh, design um, the geometry right, like with this piece of paper here, then you can easily fold material where it wants to go and not where it has to go. So you had a brainstorm when you picked up a packet of chips? Yes. <laughs> so the next step was to look at something useful for steel. So that's like, like, a, like a piece of cardboard? Not just any piece of cardboard. When you form it like this, you can see it's the, it's the basis of the corrugated sheet. And now we've got the basis of our bend. And it just shows that if you get the geometry right, um, you can form a complex bend like that without stretching or crushing the material. The eureka moment when you saw this could actually be done, what was that like? We basically put in the tool, we had 10 engineers standing there, all of them said it couldn't be done, and then it came out perfect. How did that make you feel when you proved them all wrong that it could be done? Oh, we were very proud and very excited um, uh, about yeah, the future opportunities. We've managed to form all sorts of different steel grades with different coatings, we've formed aluminium. This paved the way for a real structural solution. So what you can see here is a structural panel with two corrugated sheets uh, and a spacer made using our unique bend. And this forms an incredibly stiff structure, which potentially can be the basis for a completely new building system. So it's fully self-supporting and structural? Absolutely. I'll, all right, I'll give it a try. Yeah, he's right. So Matt, you can dream up the concept, prove that it's possible, but to take it to the world, you need a partner. Absolutely, so we didn't want to set ourselves up as a producer and try and replicate what we were doing all over the place. And we looked at teaming up with the best, and so we approached Bluescape, and they were really interested in what we were doing. So Emily, we've heard from the scientists, the engineers, but from a design perspective, this is incredible. It is, and Lysart are absolutely over the moon to have this as part of our product suite now. So it's taken many years to formulate and create and innovate to the point that it is now, and we absolutely love it at Lysart. It's our bread and butter, and this has actually taken it to new heights where we can see it created into beautiful architecture across Australian cities and um, in the country as well. How lucky are we? to have like these mad boffin engineers improving <laughs> something which we thought was already brilliant. <laughs> Absolutely. It's great that they're local, it's great that it's Australian owned and produced and we just wouldn't be where we are today without those innovators, without that creative thinking. What an incredible improvement to one of Australia's most iconic building products, the Form Flow Bend, a super sensation steel innovation. For an architect, this would be like unwrapping a Christmas present. <laughs> How sexy is this new profile? It 100% is sexy and that's what we love. We want it to be sexy and who thought steel could be? <laughs> Australians love the beach and many love to surf. But the surf can sometimes be a little inconsistent. This next innovation may be the solution that every surfer is searching for. So Troy, we're at your family home in Bunbury. This is where it all began. What was your light bulb moment? Well, Susie, I was in the bath and there was a, a, a light fitting above the bath. It's very similar to the one we've got in front of us now. Right, this one? Yeah. yeah. Um, and I just took it down, started pushing some waves at the light fitting. It made, some, made something happen. Mm. And the rest is kind of history, really. So this lampshade, I mean, these are in pretty much everyone's bathrooms. They are. So can you ex use this and explain to me how the wave goes over it? Of course. So if you, if you consider that this is the back, this is the, this is the deep ocean. This is the ocean. And this is the beach. Yes. What happens is when a wave approaches it, this is... This is slightly um, higher at the back and smoothed off at the front. Oh, the wave in, in the air wave? Yes. Yep. And then when the, wave, when the wave hits it, it rises up yep. above here and then tapers off. 
in both directions. And, and so peels. it sort of curls up? Yep. There's a little curl thing happen, happens here, and then it kind of peels away both directions to the beach. We went to prototype stages, smaller prototypes made out of plaster that I sculpted, and then we put the prototypes into a test pond that we dug on our property in Yelling Up. And then we went from there, and we thought, we'll just go full ocean test. And you had some investors for that? We had some investors for the full ocean test here from Bunbury, and the, the Bunbury City Council contributed money too, which is fantastic. When Troy brought it to us, we just thought it was such a fantastic idea. Bunbury has got such amazing beaches and a big, uh, strong surf community, but not a really reliable surf break. Um, so this innovation to potentially have a world first and a world class surf break on our local beach is an amazing opportunity. Susie, here's something I've made earlier. Fantastic. Obviously the, um, the airwave is not made of sand. What is it made of? Well, it's made of, out of a sand slurry and air contained by rubber. Does it affect the sand bed? No, it's, it's designed to sit on the sand bed rather inertly and just affect the wave action and, the, and subtly affect the sand environment. Right. The actual prototype's 12 metres round in diameter. So how about, we, how about we measure out exactly what the size is on the sand now? Fantastic. The original one was 1.6 at the yeah. highest point. So taller than me. Slightly taller than you, Susie, yeah, but not too much taller. So it's a, it's a pretty exciting time for the airwaves. We've actually been published in 12 languages and in about 300 publications online and in print. We've actually started receiving orders for airwaves and we haven't even put the second prototype in. So it's a, it's a very exciting time. The airwave has the potential to create waves around the globe. All Troy needs are investors. Watch this space. <laughs> <laughs>